you got a log that just got so much stress in it, it looks like a pizza, then you gotta, and you gotta do something different. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. All right, this sucks. This log has stress in every direction. You can tell it does. So, I don't like sawing logs like this, but what you do is you gotta have, I'm gonna have to saw it when it's called in a diagonal. I wanna put cracks in the corners. It's gonna be hard to get a flat board out of this. Hey guys, welcome back to another Hobby Hardwood Alabama. So you can see right off the bat, I normally will orient the stress crack top and bottom. This one is gonna get oriented diagonally. There's stress in every direction. This is a pizza. If I cut here, I'm gonna have cracks in those boards, cracks in these boards. What I'm gonna do is cut this, cut this, cut that, cut that. I'm gonna start working it down and I'm gonna try to put these cracks or the defects in the corners. So I just have to keep walking it down. I don't think you've ever seen me do this technique. It's one I really don't like to do because it, it's gonna result in twisted lumber or it's gonna result in bowed, bowed lumber, but this stuff's got so much stress in both planes, it's not a whole lot I can do about it. On about six inches of heartwood. The sap has got a lot of cracks on it anyway, so I got to get rid of that. Got my auto down to one and one eighth. So I'm going to take another cut off this before I move everything. I'm going to flip these. I'll move this one. Tow board this up a little bit. I'm not a big fan of tow boards, but got a little hot on that one. A little too fast. Notice how I'm trying to hit the ends and the exits the best that I can. You want, in, in this situation, I know there's going to be stress. So, the only thing worse than a stress board is one that's full of cracks. Get one more here. I need to get this one off so I can edge it. I'll probably edge these on the mill just because I'm ornery today. Well, this is probably the most balanced of the sides of the faces. Take a couple here.
Now we need to do a back roll. Take a couple spaces off this side. I think you get the idea, so I'm pretty even here. I'm going to do a 180, get those, and basically I'm trying to just come in in a circular spiral pattern and put all the cracks in the corners. There's stress going in every direction on this pant. There's really not a whole lot I can do with it, but I can try to minimize the defects. So when I'm sawing like this, this is the kind of boards that I expect to get out. There's basically no cracks from side to side. You can see where I'm just catching some right there, but the remainder of the board is crack free. You will, you're not gonna get all of them. You're still gonna see some cracks in them because right here, you can see where the crack starts to lead off a little bit. It's perfect right there. You can see it's leading off. So I'll have to edge this board, but you can kind of see the strategy. And this is where having a computer set work really makes a difference. This is called, uh, I'm using both pattern mode, down mode. If you've got an AccuSet, it's this guy and this guy. The cool thing about the LT70 is I can reset my zeros here using this button. When I press that button, you'll notice I'm resetting my zero point for that pant. With wood misers in pattern mode, all I really have to do, because I got everything programmed in for my four quarter board, I've got two ways to do this. I can go to this icon and hit it. Now I'm in pattern mode. Or I can go to this button and hit it. And I'm in pattern mode. Every time I drop this trigger, it's going to drop to the perfect height. Even though my cans isn't exactly isn't square it's rectangular i don't have to worry about my height drops or my drops i've already got them programmed in so for this drop all i got to do is you can see this is red i hit the button once it turns green i'm at the right height i can engage the blade here or i can do it here disengage the debarker All I gotta do is hit the trigger, it's gonna automatically drop to my next cut. All I gotta do is come up here to the head, drop it down, this is real speed. Hit this button, hit this button, drop, drop, on. That side's about right. I got one side that's way out of shape now. Rotate around. Now the cool thing is, the cool thing is I was just sawing on the face that was 180 degrees. So I don't have to take it out of pattern mode. I just hit the trigger. No matter how high I am, it's automatically going to find my last height right there. Pretty cool with a computer. You still gotta know what you're doing. Now we're gonna saw this side up. Oh, I love that sound when this sawmill's hitting that note. Woo, baby.
running out of room on this tent. I don't really like edging on the mill. I've got a nice edger. But, you know, it's YouTube. Maybe show some people how I do it. I see a lot of slow ways to do it. Basically stack your wood, come down, find out in this case where the cracks are. Fire up the machine. Here's a trick for all the folks with edgers. The last thing you want to do is what I see everybody do on the YouTube is they take these boards and they flip this one down and flip this one down and flip that one down and flip them all over and really, and then they got to flip them back and then it's like, how many times do you want to handle that board? This is a quick way to do it. Get your backstops, bring them down about halfway or something. See this? Now watch this. Instead of having to flip everything 37,000 times, I get right here, I don't push forward, I pull back and I get my hand out of the way and this is gonna slide down. Watch. Look at that. Now, take them and push them against the backstop. Pull back, go down, go up, go up, flip them in, drop down, drop down, and saw them. You know, I hope that looked as easy and fast as it is in real life, because it really is that easy and fast. Bring them back. And then stack these jokers up. Sometimes you just have to make adjustments or compromises on bow and twist. These boards turned out pretty good, but when you got a log that just got so much stress in it, it looks like a pizza, then you gotta be creative and you gotta do something different. And typically that's not saw through each crack and just ruin the boards. What you wanna do is take it and saw it here, as you saw, start trimming it down like an onion, trying to get it balanced and basically some pretty nice wide boards versus boards that had mega cracks running all the way through. So folks, appreciate y'all watching. Please hit the like and subscribe. And I tell you what, I'm gonna start doing like a question and answer thing at the end of my videos maybe. I don't know. You have some stuff that I'd like to talk about. Yeah, it was a Freudian slip. If you send me a comment about something I'd like to talk about, probably at the end of the video, I'm gonna pull that comment out and I'm going to try to address it. If it's a really good comment, I'll probably make a whole video on it. I do appreciate you guys watching. That's why I'm making these videos. So if you can help me out and hit the like button, uh, uh, hit the subscribe button, make comments, do questions, whatever. Have a good time. I love sawmilling. It's fun. I hope y'all got a sawmill. If you don't, watch me having fun. If you have your own sawmill, have fun running your own sawmill. That's what these videos are for. Try to take some of the stress and unknowns out of it. Y'all have a good one. We'll see y'all next week.